Okay, speak to Glenn, please. Yeah, speaking. Oh, you sounded different today. Okay. <laughs> you sounded energetic, more energetic. <laughs> more energetic, yeah. Oh, it's Dana. Yeah, I've been uh, trying to get uh, a lot of uh, grass cutting done because there's rain coming. So I just come in from outside and it's a little out of breath. <laughs> but that's me. I I get energetic from time to time. <laughs> that's good. That's good. <laughs> uh, so um, I uh, met up with Jared probably um, late last week, and um, he finished reading your paper, so he uh, handed them off to me. So I've been uh, diving into those this week, and uh, yeah, very interesting stuff. <laughs> Very good seeing like um the build up from like, you know, your first couple issues and then yeah. all of a sudden all of a sudden there's like a like a turbo boost <laughs> kicked in or something. Yeah. Yeah. Revelation. Yeah, yeah. So I like your uh, section on the bees, uh, and <laughs> now I look at everyone as uh they have antennas coming out of their head, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, they do their hair, but they don't know it. Most of it's short, so. <laughs> yeah, most, pe- most people haven't got a clue what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Bees have. <laughs> yeah. Hang on just a second. I'm going to turn this TV that's playing in the background down because I can't hear much. Oh, okay. I think Tom sleeps through most of the programs that he's got on TV. <laughs> I think he 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 has never seen the end of anything he watches. <laughs> I walk by every now and then. I said, "Who won the game?" I don't know. Why do you watch? <laughs> well, I like to watch. <laughs> who's, yeah. who's winning? I don't know. Who's on top in the league? I don't know. <laughs> That's funny. It must it must be the uh, uh what is it like a kid he has this uh uh thing that revolves over the crib there. Oh yeah. Um I know you're talking about those, uh, those little bells or little stuffed yeah. animals that yeah. 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 So it's just the movement, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the flicker rate. Eh? Hey? The flicker rate puts him to sleep, probably. <laughs> yeah. I think it switches to that alpha rhythm, right? It switches that on, so it's almost like getting hypnotized. Yeah. Or it is like you're getting hypnotized. So what's new with you? They, they have a word for that thing, and I can, I can never remember it. It's been such a long time since I had kids that these things used to be part of our normal everyday language. <laughs> oh, uh, my anyway. name's three, and, and I forgot it already. <laughs> Don't feel bad. <laughs> What's new, except for reading papers? Um, I've been doing my own little, uh, you know, I guess, uh, study in different. Um, Types of people, usually like uh, Asian people, from Filipino to Korean and Japanese, actually mainly, and just seeing how uh, just the differences in their programming and like the the way they go about um, just uh, I guess their their uh, uh, well manufactured goals in life, you know. Yeah. Wrong memory. Uh, uh, yeah, the wrong memory. So I see it in person. It's kind of interesting to watch, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it, they don't have that, um, like, like, I guess the RAM would be more, um, or that mentality is more like you want to experiment with, and have adventure and, and take chances, but they're just, they're, no. <laughs> yeah, we got to read it in the book. You know? Yeah. Not in the book, can't do it. Get yeah. in trouble. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> That's why they, they wrote Bibles and 
Qurans for people in the Middle East because they couldn't read Chinese and Confucius wouldn't have made sense to them. So mm-hmm. instead, they got a um, futuristic view of the life they were about to live under the guise of it having happened in the past. Mm -hmm. Stick a nail in my feet and let me hang on the cross. (laughs) (laughs) And love it. (laughs) Yeah, like uh, the Japanese aren't Religious, in that sense, yeah. Oh, oh, I won't say they're not religious, but they don't practice any religion. But the religion they do practice is work, working. <laughs> yeah. They're workaholic they worker bees. If they practice any religion, it's called uh, uh, Zen Buddhism. Yeah, Zen and Shinto. They, yeah. But I mean, they don't. They are, they are city Zen. Yeah. of the world. They own it. Mm. At least they think they own it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the Ottawa newspaper, The Citizen. The Citizen. <laughs> the one that has all these yellow and black trucks that run around town delivering papers, following black and yellow school buses <laughs> and they make sure they don't cross the black and yellow lines on the road. You know. Wow. <laughs> the highway, right? The highway. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're right. And even the the school buses now have uh, the mirrors that come off look like antenna. So <laughs> yeah. if you look at their, their mirrors. It's, uh, the big old yellow, but yeah, I used to sit on that thing too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I never did get to take a bus to school because we lived basically a block away from the primary school that we went to. Mm. And uh, then when it came time to go to high school, uh, my mother was alone and didn't have the fun, so it was a two-mile walk. Oh, wow. We didn't have school buses for high school in those days. The walk, but, you know, you get to see a lot of town and know a lot of different places that you wouldn't otherwise know. Yeah. As a kid, if you're walking, mind you, a few times slipped off the sidewalk and dropped my lunch in the street and a bus ran over it. <laughs> you know, so it's the bus you could have been on. Splash. <laughs> you know, could have been me instead of the sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. So you got to work at the bright side. There's <laughs> always the bright side. So, yeah, I've been actually... When I was reading your paper, I didn't realize you had basically even um, what you're you still can. Yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say is you're sticking to your story because uh, that even back then, '98, you're basically saying the same stuff you're saying now. You know, so you're not deviating much, but you know, you're improving it. You're, I guess the Bill delivery God, of it. That, but the basic story is always the same, mm-hmm. except mm-hmm. when you're talking about corrupt politicians. Well, there's a lot more people who want to be on side because that's popular. Mm -hmm. That's acceptable. But the minute you say politicians have bosses, even though they may be prime minister or president, they got bosses. Those are the people you have to identify because it doesn't matter which politician you have, they've already chosen three from the batch of their people Mm -hmm. and they want you to vote for any one of the three, uh, preferably divide you into equal camps so their people will make the difference every time an election comes. That's basically what they do. So 
the minute you say something like that, ooh, they didn't read that in the citizen. <laughs> <laughs> and they back off. Ooh. The same thing with, you know, the gang that was uh, your group there. They uh, they all get against Alan Watt because mm. Glenn Keeley has the answer, but then somebody tells them, don't believe in that. Oh, okay. Yep. Don't believe in that. <laughs> and they think they're, they're researchers. They think they're seekers of truth. Yep. They're just robots. Yeah, it's actually pretty disappointing to find that out. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. it's it's the net. That's how it's been structured. Yeah. And, uh, it's done basically to keep control. It had no no um, uh, other idea when I started it, with the exception that out of all of the people that go to the net. Just maybe there's a few with functioning brains. And that's basically what it comes down to. You get uh, you get a few with functioning brains. Yeah. Some people put it on as a show for the purpose of ending that they're on my side. Mm. Other people do it for the right reasons. My purpose and and job is not to define who's who. I leave that to creation. My job is to observe, analyze, and conclude. Are there 13 functioning brains out there in the world? If not, what would be acceptable to creation? Give me another number. (laughs) Oh man, two a handful. <laughs> it keeps getting smaller and smaller. Right? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty scary. Yeah, it's, I guess it's kind of like um, when you're making sales calls, right? You got to just call yep. eighty people to get one or two, and then that was a good day or something, you know? Yeah, absolutely right. You just don't pay attention to the uh, the result. The end thing is not what you're about. It's the journey. Mm-hmm. What did I do every morning when I got up? I did what I could to expose the problem and advance a solution. What else could be asked of me? Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Under yeah. the circumstances of each day, the answer to the question might change if, you know, if right. there, yeah. There are things that are available that were not available. Like I got a message from a guy in South America, and he's he's putting my discs on the net in their area, on mm-hmm. whatever. And uh, you know, it's uh, you find one on each continent. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got six. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Unless they've changed the continents again, you know. When I was going to school, it was five continents, but apparently uh, they, they had missed one or something. <laughs> we had, we were lucky. We had nine planets, but now they tell me there's only eight. Yeah. Pluto is really the name of the devil. Yeah. <laughs> The Lord of the Underworld. Yeah. And it's Pluto, and you don't read the first letter, so it's Lu Tu. Lu Lu. Little Lu Lu. It's the name of God. Imagine that. Little Lu Lu. <laughs> there used to be cartoons, uh, magazines there, um, comic books with little Lulu when I was a kid. Mm, that's probably why it rings a bell for me. <laughs> yeah. And and I don't know if she lived in Honolulu, <laughs> but it has the name. Mm. Honorable Lulu. Honor Abel. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty interesting that uh, like Jared and I live so close to each other. You know, and uh, you didn't know <laughs> that before. Oh no! I mean, when I first, the reason why I actually started talking to him because another, actually, that kid, uh, Vic, that you probably had the pleasure of meeting. <laughs> he actually, uh, he ran this forum, and then uh, he contacted me saying, "Oh, there's a guy up in New York. Maybe you, you live close to him or something." So he gave me his number. I'm like, oh, he, he and he probably lives like you know half hour, forty minutes away from me. So right. Just heading east. I'm closer to the city. He's a little bit further on the island, but I mean that's nothing compared to you. Know. <laughs> he could be anywhere else in the world. So, yeah. his uh, I and I told him this. His name Jerd, the the J in Desdemona is also a D. Mm-hmm. So his name is really Durd. Durd. Dude. And because the E and U are interchangeable, it's uh, can be D U R D. Because a D can be a T, as in D D T. Hmm. The name can be turd. Turd. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I said there's, there's uh, nothing worse than uh, coming from hell, which hell on earth is supposed to be Haiti. Yeah, Haiti, yeah. And, and you're king shit of Turd Island. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you're thinking about when you're cutting the grass, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you're, you're looking at genetic engineering. And mm. recently they've come out with stories about the easiest way to uh, clone a species of animal that lived in the past is by finding feces. Mm. And from the feces, you get all the DNA of the person who, or the animal who was uh, living at the time, plus the DNA of whatever they were eating, so you know what their diet was. Now, that made sense to me, and I applied it to the human race, and I said, uh, okay, you have a family called Grimaldi, mm-hmm. who rule Monaco, and who uh, are descendants of the remnants of cro magnon the Lascaux Caves in France must have revealed, along with the paintings on the walls and all those other things that they found there, a couple of turds. Hmm. And in the years following the Crusades, when the uh, Knights Templars returned from uh, Asia, they would have been instructed in genetic engineering and they would have experimented looking for a turd which they could bring to life. If they found turds in the Lascaux Caves of France, they could have in fact cloned the originals in the Grimaldi family, Hmm. which would mean that Prince Rainier uh, is is related to the Cro Magnon forty thousand years ago, and it's it's a strange coincidence because that's the period in time which I believe I came from forty thousand BC, and I said that even though I know of much older things. Um, I don't have the feeling that I lived those periods, but rather was taught and I mm. learned about the past in 40,000 BC. And it's quite possible then that 
the same DNA that was used to clone the Grimaldi gang uh, was part of the experiment that led to me because there were always battles between the Irish and the French as to who would be superior. Nothing I've ever seen in my life at home justified my mother and father being married. Mm -hmm. The only thing they had in common was that they lived in Ottawa, and both their families were relatively connected on either side. The Keeleys with direct links to St. Patrick's College and home and all of that stuff. in the Seganes uh, basically being the central group of the French-Canadian community. Seganes basically in, in astrology, astronomy, converts to the foot. That's the, the definition mm -hmm. is the foot. So maybe they were the foot and St. Patrick's was the mouth, the tap, pat, tap. They wanted these two families to come together and have a baby. It just so happens that when I was taken to Regal at the age of five, my aunt, who was my mother's sister-in-law, my her brother's wife also brought her son. And that meant that two boys showed up from the same basic period in time and with connections to the same family, one carrying the Sege name, because my uncle male would be, mm -hmm. his children would be Segeans, and because my father was Irish, we would be Keeleys, but we're all basically linked to the Sige line, which goes back to southern France, which could very well mean that it explains the thing that I had taken as as just a, a thrown-out line. When, when I went to Regal, I think I told you before that... Um, I was told that I would have to find a lady with a specific breast mm -hmm. who, would, mm -hmm. who would show me uh, what my task really was, and that happened 50 years later. But on the way out, I heard, and I'm not able to define closer than it looked like a man in a dress, religious person, I don't know if it was a priest or a, a bishop or yeah. a cardinal or whatever, but it was something like that. And uh, he yelled to me, and we were speaking French, of course, at the time, because my mother was French. <laughs> he yelled to me, Mange la main. Oh, Glenn, mange la main. And in French, literally translated, that would be, Eat shit, and I. It, <laughs> it, it said a lot, you know. It's not something that is, that is just oh. said. Okay, it's it's something like "fuck you" or something, you know, uh -huh. um, in the French language. Uh, the French. Did he say that to you? You're so young. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I couldn't figure out what he was talking about, um, and. As I analyze the circumstances, uh, if he was saying mange la main, he was saying uh, immunize yourself. In other words, by, by uh, ingesting small quantities of bad stuff, you in fact make yourself tougher mm -hmm. uh, for when the real problems occur. And that's the same thing as taking no for an answer when you're in sales. You yeah. basically become immune yeah, to yeah. the fact that the person is saying no, and you accept that as 
part of the sale. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. However, if if he was, if I misunderstood, and he was in fact speaking to me in the code that I know of today, in the Desdemona code, in which you disregard the first letter and you speak starting at the second letter. And what he said to me, I misunderstood as being mange de la marde, was really ange de la marde. That changes the whole context from eat, mange, in French, to ange, angel. Mm. Angel of shit would basically be the words you would use to explain DNA and cloning. Mm. Because a, a, there are two kinds of angels. There's the angel that came 40,000 B.C., which is known as Cro-Magnon. It has in its name Cro, which is the smartest bird alive. Mm. It can do things with tools, the raven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have um, uh, magnon, which is uh, G-N-O from Gnostic, which is Mm -hmm. very intelligent. So those connotations basically say that an angel is someone from prior to the Ice Age. But the current angels are called archangels. And they suggest they would have begun after the Ice Age following the story of Noah and the Ark. Genetic engineering being the only possibility that their uh, allegory refers to. You cannot put two of every animal on a boat of any size, so (laughs) especially not that size. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So, um, by saying to me, Ange de la Merde, he could have been saying, You are the genetic product flown from turds found in uh, France, in the Lascaux Caves in France. And that would mean that the Grimaldi family and me come from the same thing. It's not an accident that uh, in in uh, the Middle East uh, we were supposed to uh, have begun our journey uh, coming into the Middle East uh, coming from a place called Ur. Well, Ur would suggest that it's the middle part of turd. <laughs> it's interesting that there is a an activity going on that uh, um, basically wants to take over our mortgage for the farm. financial institution is called TD, mm-hmm. which is the beginning and the end of the word turd. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know for certain yet if there's any real connotation to all of that, but <laughs> it all is kind of running around in my brain here. Yeah. I can see, yeah. yeah. And we are located just outside of the capital, and the last governor general, last French governor general of Canada was called Regal. (laughs) And that's where I was taken, was to Regal. And Regal is a code word for gore Mm -hmm. and for... uh, Triangle, triangular pieces of land, 
which is happens to be the piece of property across the street from us here across the road mm. uh, and the people living there are called Gorel. Gorel. That's Gore too, you know, they had two L's at the end basically. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's you know, there's too many <laughs> circumstantial things happening at this yeah. stage of the game. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they say there's no such thing as coincidence. So. Yeah. Today there was a uh, an activity on the net with a device that uh, the guy that set up our our site had put on. Um, and uh, when I went to the site, it, there was something that said maintenance is required. Uh, on, on this device, and therefore you can't access it for a while. And that's, that's funny, they had that two days ago. Why would they do maintenance two days hmm. in the same week? So That's why you didn't post? I, I came back at the time they posted they would be back, 10 o'clock, uh, and it wasn't there yet, but they had changed the time to 11. <laughs> only in in the time that I was on the site, so I said uh, said to the the security people, um, there seems to be some activity trying to get me away from doing what I'm doing. Um, and for what purpose, I don't know. But I'm going to go cut grass. You keep an eye on the farm and let me know when I get back. So I come back at 11, and it was now you could start it up again, and that makes no sense that they could do anything in an hour anyway. But uh, I then spoke to the security people and said, you were right. While you were away, a, um, a truck pickup truck with a cover on the cab at, uh, on the um, in the bed the bed at the back mm -hmm. uh, stopped in front of the farm and videotaped <laughs> i i have a um, a symbolic display in the front field see if there's anybody in freemasonry that knows anything about allegory and symbolism because to me, it seems like they write that down, but nobody ever tells them what it all means. <laughs> <laughs> so I put it out in front, and and uh, I haven't had anybody come in. Well, I shouldn't say I haven't had anybody. I had uh, two cyclists, a male and a female, uh, stop by on the road, and I said, you can come in, you know, we don't bite. Uh, but they wouldn't come in. <laughs> and and uh, she was nervous as hell. So whatever is going on, some people are talking about us, and they might must think that we're the devil or something. I don't know. That long-haired fella. Yeah. <laughs> it's, really? it's funny. On Sunday morning, they they all drive past me when I'm out in the field there, out in front, feeding the animals. And they they look at me as if to say, you know, this guy with long hair. And they're going to church, <laughs> and they're going to pray to this guy with long hair on the cross. You know, <laughs> you know they 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 have the priest or whatever get up and tell them about this guy who built an ark, and mm. uh, how the neighbors were so stupid that they laughed yeah. at him while he was doing it. Yeah. And yet they don't see the connotation at all. <laughs> they they leave the church, drive by my place. <laughs> <laughs> don't look, I, kids. <laughs> I just gave <giggle. laughs> up. Um, that, I guess, is part of getting tougher at every step of the way, you know. You live many lives, you get tougher along the way. Mm -hmm. Yes. And 
understandings come or overstandings come quicker. Yeah. Yeah. But you're yeah. getting there. Yeah. So that's what I mean. Basically, I, I'm constantly just in my mind uh, trying to be as um, original as possible. Because <laughs> I know, you know, for instance, with family, with everything like that, our friends, you're always supposed to act a certain way. So I'm just trying not to act a certain way. <laughs> kind of looking at everyone. Uh, um, I'm, you know, not trying to be so rude, I would say, but um, I'm just trying to see what would a normal, like, should I, like, I basically, when guilt is applied, because family likes to put guilt when you start yeah. swaying away from what's expected, I guess. No, so I just call that convention. They've decided in the past what you're supposed to believe in. They call mm-hmm. that convention. So if if you're not conventional, you're eccentric. <laughs> yeah. And and I've told them I, I thank you for that definition because <laughs> I don't want to be centric. <laughs> I don't want to be surrounded by people who must tell me what to do all the time. I would right. rather be kind of over on the side making up my own mind. Yeah. Well, you know, you know I, I'm sitting there reading your paper. It's like it's like, you know, the New York Times. <laughs> my <living room. laughs> yeah. And they're like, what do you, you know? Like my, you know, my sister, I mean, they know about you, right? So they don't, they're not like, oh, what is that? You know, but, but um, you know, I'm just sitting there reading that, re- like absorbing what I'm reading, and then like looking around, like, oh, like, <laughs> why am I here? <laughs> Nothing against them, but just for me, like, I feel like I have to do my own experiencing. So, you know, yeah, that's what if I was, was, that, if was that. That's the yeah. benefit the papers gave me. It was kind of a a um, nanema. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, definitely. As I write it down, I get it out of my daily system, and mm-hmm. and I can can move on. You know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, um, so that's where I'm going through right now. Just there's some some experiences I want to do, but I know if I do, it's going to piss off a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know. Well, that's that's the the prison they create in yeah. people's minds is is always uh, that you're supposed to be living your life for other people. Mm. Mm-hmm. One of my sons told me that one day too that uh, thought more of myself than of them, and what he really was saying is. Hey, Dad, I got used to living with all the expenses paid. <laughs> What's this idea of going off the yeah. deep end, you know? And and now I got to do things for myself, type of thing. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's funny they survived. They survived, but you know. yeah, I Ooh. I I didn't have the way of explaining it. To him back then, but now that I've read the Bible, um, I know basically what the answer is. That's when you've been genetically engineered, you're programmed. Mm. And you're off doing what you've been programmed to do. So. Don't blame me for what I'm doing. I'm just doing what I was programmed to do. Now, if you want to blame me, blame me for what I'm going to do when I'm not going to follow the program. Mm -hmm. And and there isn't much to blame me for except having walked away from a 25-year marriage. Yeah. Before the ceremony, where I'd have to make a speech on how great it was. <laughs> <laughs> it's been real, guys, but uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, yeah. 
I look back on, on the women that I have lived with, been married to some and lived with others, and each one uh, had a specific role to play in my education. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My, my first wife's name was Carmen. Mm, car. Car. It was my vehicle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Although it was me with the car. But that was her name. So that links a little bit to the Spanish side of southern France. Mm-hmm. And, and then the... Uh, the next one was uh, Claudette. Uh, it's linked to the word cloud. Mm. So you're you're basically up in the clouds, looking back down on things. And then mm. the last one was Shelly Ann Clark was her when I met her, and S-A-C is the French, the initial Shelley Ann Clark, S-A-C, uh, the word sac in yeah. French, sac is a bag in English, yeah. mm-hmm. so uh, they taught me how to get out of the car, up in the clouds, look down and see the <laughs> the bag ladies who are running the world. Mm, yeah. And then I I listened to uh, Fermi, um, article accelerator in Switzerland, CERN, and, mm. and they're talking about creating a new version of an atom by use of a hadron collider. Hadron means a bag because the contents of an atom cannot sit by themselves. They must be contained within a bag and it's the the quarks and neurons and all of the different things that can make up an atom uh, together in a bag that basically gives definition to that particular atom. Mm. And you can't photograph quarks because they're too small and they're always hidden in these hadrons, these bags. So by creating a collision, the bags smash into each other and things go flying out and a uh, a quirk has to find a, another bag to get into. So it mm-hmm. chases for a bag in a split second. You can photograph it while it's looking for a bag, and then it gets in the bag. But the minute it goes in the bag, it creates a new version of an atom, which creates a new version of life, which mm-hmm. creates things that have never been before because in the past, collisions between hadrons only happen in space. And (laughs) since there's nothing there, the collision doesn't have an impact. But now they want to do it underground because hadrons and, and things can't come underground from space. That's why they want to do it underground, but they're not taking into consideration, or they say they're not, they haven't taken into consideration (laughs) that those two environments are different. Yeah. And since underground you have coal seams, Mm. they are basically playing with the concept that what they're doing is the, the new thing the atom would do was to spark the coal scene into fire, fire and brimstone. Mm. Mm. I suspect some people know. Yeah. And others um, 
are just reading the book and not being told because it wasn't written in the book. <laughs> you know? So who's going to win the race? There's a race on between Switzerland and Chicago. Switzerland thought they had it in the bag. Is that a pun? So, uh, but then they had a problem, mechanical problem, so now they're delayed. Fermi in Chicago might beat them to the punch and light it in Chicago. And certainly from everything I see on the net these days, if it's not happening, if they're not in the process of preparing to do it and have Michigan collapse, then we're living in an age of deception because all the hints are there. And it's, it's much like Normandy just before the uh, attack on Europe uh, by the Allied forces they spent a period of time, a couple of months, doing all kinds of things to deceive the Germans as to what they were actually going to do. And they kept the landing at Normandy so secret that 99.9% .9 of the military that got on boats in England to go to France had no idea where they were going. And they got on just so they wouldn't leak the information. Uh, and and that's basically how they got enough people on the shore uh, mm. to, to make a difference. So we're living in that time of deception, which could turn to real any time they push the button. The quiet before the storm, huh? Yeah. Well, I've so, been looking at weather patterns in the United States over the last month, and I don't know how the people in that space from New Orleans up to Michigan uh, survived with the, all of the storms they've had. Yeah, constant rain. Yeah. yeah. yeah I think there's, an, there's one right now. Yeah. They're getting... We seem here. to be waiting for the hockey game. <laughs> Detroit <laughs> and Pittsburgh are going to be playing tomorrow night the Stanley Cup Finals. And hockey, the word hockey, of course, forget the first letter, number two becomes number one, and what you have is the word co-key, second key. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't, mm -hmm. it wouldn't surprise me if... Uh, there wasn't a link between hockey and, and a message being sent out to their team that mm. time is here. You know. mm. So it could be, do you think it could be this soon? Or? It could even be tomorrow. That is uh, taking into consideration the fact that they're getting more worried every day that people they used to control without question within priesthoods and especially in in the nunneries around the world are starting to ask questions. I have a lot of contacts from nuns now from all around the world and Mm. Uh, they've been had, basically. You know, they their last vow uh, agrees that they're married to Jesus. And since they're married to Jesus, they have to agree to some type of artificial insemination or... Uh, mm carrying a baby to term on the pretext that it's like Mary. That way they've been able through their orphanages 
to download a lot of kids into different families. And as you know, because I've told you a number of times, the four generations after the one made in the lab have an impact on the community. They marry, they have children, those children have children. So what started off as a 62% pure baby out of a nunnery's lab ends up with a whole bunch of children of the first, second, third, and fourth generations. Hmm. Yep. So it doesn't take long uh, under the circumstances that one knows exists within places like Latter-day Saints and nunneries to, to basically feed the marketplace and have, uh, have uh, manufactured people running around the streets instead of original people. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a pregnant nun. <laughs> no, they are kind of wear a habit, so you, you don't. But then again, I don't just see nuns walking around either. So. <laughs> you don't hang around nuns either. <laughs> yeah. I used to. As a matter of fact, there was a convent near my place, and I used to help the girls jump the fence on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> on Sunday, huh? <laughs> we'd go neck to neck in the park. <laughs> That's nice. So, uh, yeah, I've, the only nuns I've ever come in contact with was in my my college, private college. But I only went because it was two miles away from my house. But <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I see them, and uh, they're actually uh. I see the older ones that are all, I guess, uh, mad that I'm a, a man or something. <laughs> it seems like. <laughs> well, they, you know, they have what they basically went there to get, which is security and sovereignty. Mm -hmm. Governments leave them alone and get to do what they want. But the price they have to pay to be accepted as an official nunnery is they got to make babies. And you'll see uh, much of the uh, initiates who want to become nuns, those who leave, leave on the day they were to give their final vows. Because mm -hmm. that's when they find out what they're really there for. Well. So, and then they don't have a problem giving the baby up after? No, because it's not their baby. The same thing that I was talking about for me, I, when I, I didn't have an answer for my children, but the answer is in the Bible. It's in uh, Luke chapter 2, verses 40 to 49. The context is Jesus has disappeared from his family. Mary and Joseph are looking for him, thinking that he's with some relatives in another part of the caravan they're in, and then they find out he's not there, so they turn back and go to Jerusalem and track him down, and he's in a temple telling the priests, what I'm telling the priests. Uh, the, uh, Mary in the story says, don't you know that we were looking for you, that we were worried? And his answer, paraphrased, is, why were you worried? Didn't you know I'd be about my father's work? Mm-hmm. I'd be, I'd be following my program. He's speaking in front of two people. One's supposed to be his mother. The other one's supposed to be his father. And obviously he's not talking about them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's 
talking about the genetic engineer that made them. <laughs> well, you know, when whenever I'll go into court again, it'll be a, a different approach from from the last few times where I refused to swear on the Bible. And in Canada, if you don't swear on the Bible, you can uh, assert or something. Have another word for it, affirm. And and um, they they allow you to testify by affirming. But next time I go into court, I'm going to open up the Bible. And say, excuse me, I need to find <laughs> see if you have this in here. You know, and look up Luke chapter two verses forty to forty nine, read it and say, Yeah, okay. Do you guys believe in this? In this <laughs> Bible? So if I swear on this, it's because I'm swearing on stuff you guys believe in? Yeah, okay. Then I'll swear on it. But if you don't believe it, I'm gonna tell you about it later. <laughs> And, and surely it's going to happen. Well, what did you do? Say, Luke chapter 2, verse 40 to 49. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? Did you do the same? <laughs> you know, the actions may be different, but the reason for doing it is your program. Yeah. Nobody is doing anything because they decided on it when you're a robot. Robots yeah. don't make decisions. Robots act out their program. Garbage in, garbage out. So would the difference be, say, for instance, when, um, in your case, where you're actually, you know, you have that type of immaculate conception type thing versus someone who just is born, I guess, Naturally, now, the programming difference would be yours would be more specific, and someone else's would just be whatever, whatever it is. Yeah, my mine apparently, and and there's a whole bunch of other reasons that deal with this property and people trying to get a hold of it, and they're prepared to give me what I want as long as I sign over the rights to my DNA. Uh, <laughs> apparently, DNA is like a telephone number. Mm. And uh, the exact combination of your DNA can changes every day with the things you learn. Oh, really? Uh, you know, you start off as a, a clone of something, but then you're socially engineered and you learn other things. So at the end of your life, your DNA is not the same as at the beginning of your life. Mm. It has the beginning in there, but it's got some new stuff. So that, for example, I had four children, if they were mine, yeah. I had four children, and, and they would have my DNA to the point where I had them. But I didn't know any of this stuff at that time. So they don't have my knowledge, uh, refined knowledge, uh, in, in their own DNA. So they basically operate at the level I was at, not at the level I'm at today. So the DNA I have today is apparently much more valuable to the system than what I had before I figured it all out. And, and the worst fear they have is that I'd have a baby now. Well, there isn't much of a chance of having a baby now, but as long as I'm alive, I guess... Yeah. Some old man in the past have <laughs> had babies, you know, <laughs> 80 years old, and, and right. Crosby and people like that. So, <laughs> if it was him, in any yeah. event, apparently, 
you can sell your soul to the devil. They don't call it soul, they call it DNA. Mm -hmm. If you sell your DNA, apparently they own the rights. And, And therefore, I could never be born again in the manner in which I would be on the day I died. And I told them to go up a tree. That I am not uh, trading in any present or future rights to me, because that's the only thing I have yeah. that belongs to me. So they just came up to you and said, like, try to give you a contract? or how to, how Yeah, to... yeah. It's, uh, it's what I said at the beginning was that I think what needs to happen is uh, a, um, an archaeological dig on this site that would uh, take five years and if done systematically would cost three and a half million dollars. Much in the way that Carter went about getting money from Carnarvon and and went looking for the Valley of the Kings and Mm. eventually Tutankhamun. So I have an offer from a a consortium of Latvians and Japanese. And they have come back just this month with the deals on. We are, we will expect an answer in August. You will receive three and a half million dollars. You can proceed to do what you want for five years. We will own the property and whatever it is you find at the end of that period. But you will have been able to do what you said you wanted to do, was find it. I said, is that unconditional? And they said, no, there is one condition. I said, what's that? They said, you sign over the rights to your DNA. <laughs> to most people, that wouldn't mean much. You know, not talking about things they really grasp the significance of. Wow. Because they believe that you know they're going to die and that's it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. they don't believe that their ship is more important than they are. (laughs) That's why they say mom's the word. (laughs) It. (laughs) Shish it. (laughs) So I said, well, Well, you don't have have to wait till August. The answer answer is no. (laughs) Uh, they said, no, no, we we want you to think about it, and we'll be back again, and, and we'll be uh, expecting that you will have made the right decision by that time. So the people who are acting uh-huh. on their behalf as kind of intermediaries uh, are collecting connected to the security people that I deal with, which we call the cell. Um, They say, you know, we're not taking sides in here, in in this thing here, but we believe they're serious. And we believe that they have the money to do what they say they're going to do. Um, On the other hand, we're not quite certain that it's not a test of you. Yeah. That that they may, in fact, be just trying one last time to see if if I'd sell out. So I said, well, the answer is no. Today is going to be no in August. <laughs> <laughs> and in the meantime, I'm proceeding to see if we can raise the money through other means. 
I said there there's a number of ways that we could raise the money. One would be for Bell Canada to pay me the fifty million bucks they stole from me hmm. back in nineteen eighty seven when they stole my project. I said our security people have recordings off of secure lines between the Prime Minister's office, his chief of staff, and Bell Canada about the fact that all of the things that happened with my project at the end had been rigged from the beginning. Bell Canada wanted that particular site to build their building because they would then have access underground to a lot of things they wanted access underground to. They could not acquire it. The problem was a school on the site. So they allowed me to go through the motions of um, introducing a project, getting the backing of the different levels of government for the fact that it was going to create 10,000 jobs, uh, allowed me to raise $160 million within the public and private sectors of pension funds and things like that. Um, came to the school, uh, asked to buy the school. The parents in uh, the downtown part of Hull said uh, they would never sell their school because if, uh, if they sold the school, the money would go to the provincial government and there would never be another school built in the downtown. All their kids would be bused up to uh, out of out of the downtown core area to other areas, and and they didn't want that to happen. So my solution for them was: look, you go and and find a site downtown where you would like to have a new school. Come to me with the location of that site and I'll build you a school for 400 kids on that site. It'll take three years and at the end of three years you move into that school and you hand me the deed to the first school. And that all happened. Hmm. We built the school, cost three and a half million, four million bucks or something. And uh, then we got to school, we demolished it, and we had the machinery, heavy construction equipment on the site ready to put in the foundation of my project, whose name was Mycott. And they had to basically scrape out the footprint, which was 200,000 square foot on the ground. A million and a half square feet in space would be built on it. And it was at that time that I was asked to meet with the Minister of Public Works, and he asked me for a bribe. He wanted... $5,000 that day, but he wanted, in the long term, 5% of the project on behalf of the government, is basically how he put it. And he said to me, Glenn, in situations like this, normally this would be happening through third parties. But you're an intelligent guy, and you know who I am. I'm the biggest landlord in Canada. Government of Canada owns 5,000 buildings. Said, this deal, it would be from your hand to mine. In French, it was de me à me. Hmm. And, uh, he said, you know then that the money got to the person that can make it. Your account balance is low. To add funds to your account, press 1. To continue making a call, 
Press 2. Please enter the number you wish to dial. You have 69 minutes of call time remaining. Thank you for using Penny Talk. Hello. <laughs> it disappeared guess, there again. <laughs> I guess they didn't want me to know that bit of information. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, you know, it's Bell Canada and and the Prime Minister's office, and and. You know, five percent of the project would have been what about eight million bucks or something, and in in financial terms, that wasn't going to be a problem. We're dealing with a project that's 160 million dollars. My share in the project would have been 21 million dollars on opening day, uh, but it had all been rigged. It had all been rigged. So that as soon as I told my partners that I'd been asked for a bribe and no way were we going to pay, they started fighting against me and, and tried to take over the project. And we ended up in court and, and the judge ruled that I was the president and this was a a uh, unanimous partnership agreement, which meant that if I said no, they couldn't do anything. Mm-hmm. And therefore, I was in charge. So I basically closed it down. I, I'm not participating in paying bribes. The project is not going to go forward because the financial community doesn't want to be involved in some argument between people who don't want to pay bribes Hmm. involving the prime minister's office. And what I'm saying now was I ended up in 1990 taking all of the people involved to court. I named 16 people. We spent a month bringing in policemen and politicians and everything to testify. And at the end, I was proven right. Each one of them, every single one of the 16, including the chief of staff to the prime minister, including four senators, including four cabinet ministers, and including the top three commissioners of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, were charged with a conspiracy to defraud the Canadian people. Mm. And all of them were ordered to appear in court, and they did in September 1991, I think it was. Uh, They all appeared with prostitutes and drug peddlers and uh, these are the highest ranking people in the Canadian government. And and it was at that time that I saw what was going to happen. They suspended the activity claiming they had to do a new investigation. They basically, over a three-year period, sat on their hands and did nothing. But on that day in... Uh, September when they were all charged, in uh, in June when they were charged, interest rates had gone uh, uh, up by 1%. The dollar had fallen by a cent. There was a financial crisis in the country. This was the biggest scandal that ever appeared in Canadian politics. Most people in the world think of Canada as the snow white honest place in the world. (laughs) <laughs> it's it's 
probably the most corrupt place you can find anywhere in the world. The difference between Canada and and Somalia, for example, is that Canada is so rich in natural resources that it's almost impossible for a thief to make a dent. You know, mm. They can be stealing as much as they can all day long, and it still wouldn't really impact much. Because we're basically a parking lot waiting for our turn. And our turn doesn't come until the United States is destroyed. Mm. Therefore, our government, our police, our military, our courts are all in on this plan. And it's run by Bell Canada and Shell Oil out of Holland. Hmm. Number two is number one. Yeah. So, yeah. In, in those days, all it was was corruption. Yeah. But because of who I am, I decided I'd get to the bottom of this. And now I find out it's much bigger than corruption. It It, it has to do with a bunch of people who genetically engineered human beings to make slaves out of them, play little games with us called war, pestilence, famine, disease, kill us off by the millions, now are basically preparing to kill us off by the billions. Mm. For their power trip because life gets boring in the moho. <laughs> they, they need girlfriends, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's not an accident that the word for reincarnation is basically recreation. Yeah. But recreation is also the word for recreation. Yeah. It's a pastime. It's how you spend your time when you're having fun. Okay. Yeah. That's what they're doing. They laugh at, at the problems that we have because they induce them. Yeah. And they got this whole six billion staff of robots running around the world thinking they're free without understanding that the word free has two connotations. They think libre, but in fact free is mean it means no charge. Don't pay the cent. You're slaves who pay your own way. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty sad. <laughs> yeah. So any and, and they're happy to do it. Anyone with that kind of knowledge who would just clam up deserves the worst punishment ever. Therefore, I decided, hey. I'm not going to participate in their plan, and I'm not going to shut up. If they want to kill me, they can, but I'll only be remade again and sent back again, again, and again. So they apparently have decided that I got to be, I got to sell out before I die for it to stop. I'm not in to you their enough. ranks, so I don't know the details of what they know. But I'm sure they've listened to your conversation just talking about and read your stuff talking about genetic engineering and DNA, so they think that, okay, I'll just sign it over. Like, I guess they, they're waving that little uh, 
like that cheese or something in front of you, like the carrot. That <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll get your your drill, but you know, you just got to tell you. Think of it as, as I was going to say at the beginning as a telephone number. Yeah, yeah. Your genome of today is your telephone number of today, mm-hmm. and they have arranged a twenty-four-seven open line to your brain. And they can communicate to your brain and cause you to have um, instant loss of, of direction in your thinking when critical things are occurring. Mm. The best example I can think of is a goalie in hockey. Somebody is shooting a puck at him. He's got to have his full insight and, and thinking processes focused on that shot. But if he's detracted, a, a distraction at the last moment, goals are scored on him. Yeah. And, and when you sell your DNA... That's basically what they can do. They can control your actions from that day forward by making you feel uh, depressed or um, uninterested in life, uh, and, and they can they can basically cause you to do things. And I'm thinking of mass murderers who walk into school and shoot little girls, uh, and people say, can't believe it, he was such a nice guy, you know, live next door. Yeah. Well, that's so you, mean, you mean on your next trip here, is that what you're talking about, or are you talking about currently, if you sell it currently, now? yeah, after you, they pay you, they own you. So they, how would they take your DNA, like in what way? They want to... My DNA is in in storage, uh, uh. and and I add to it on a regular basis. I have to give in uh, hair samples, uh, uh. sperm samples, all kinds of things, and they would get the rights to that material. I'm sure they'd figure out how to make sure I'm not around and there are no turds left <laughs> in the neighborhood. <laughs> uh, but the the main thing is that my DNA has been used over and over again. They were using it. And it's I was made by the system. Cro-Magnon is the second version of Mankind, not the first version that came from Clan Mother. So they right. have it, but other people have it, and they can acquire it from the other people if I assign it. But I'm not assigning it. That's quite the quite the deal they got going. <laughs> well, well you then. know, it's something that unless you have taken the time to learn what I've been talking about for years, you don't know what I'm talking about. But you you have an inkling of what it is I'm talking about. So yeah. I can I can tell you and for most people it wouldn't mean anything. You know, I, I can go to court and I can defend myself logically today. But that doesn't mean the jury will buy it. Yeah. The jury is not there. <laughs> the jury is a bunch of robots. Yeah. Jury's out. <laughs> there used to be a time when a jury was known as a grand jury. 24 people, 25 people would decide the fate of an individual. But when they figured out that they had it down to only one person in 20, 5%, basically still had a functioning brain, they couldn't take a chance of losing a case 
because there was a person with a functioning brain on the jury having 24 people, the odds were that one of them would have a functioning brain. So they cut it down to 12. (laughs) And that way, it's almost impossible to get one with a functioning brain on a jury. You don't even have one in 20. don't have 5%. Yeah. Yeah. Someone that opened their mouth anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they do all those. That's what the jury selection is all about, right? (laughs) Yeah. They're sitting there, they're asking all those questions. What'd you do? You know, they're trying to test. Oh, he's he's too much of a thinker. You you, you can go home now. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah. And if you look at a jury these days, and I, I have on a number of cases, you find that a lot of people who show up as jurors are religious people, mm-hmm. ministers of different churches, and and they end up being the foreman because mm. they talk, and, you know, most of the other people are we men, yes men, yeah. and, and they just go along. Well, I got to go to bed. I'm falling asleep. <laughs> okay. Sorry, but no, yeah, it's a little. I called you a little later this time. Since two o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> well, good luck with uh, getting back online and all that stuff. So. Well, thank you. I wanted to call to check in, make sure everything is all right up in your. <laughs> I'll be glad to see you guys show up. Yes, be glad to make it up there. <laughs> I might come sooner than August. I might. There might be a chance in July, but I'm. It would, it would probably be for like a weekend type of thing. Yeah. Like it's two, three days. But uh, whenever, yeah, always invited. It's just a pa- I just gotta show a passport. Just I'll probably drive through. So it's just that's all you need. There's no yeah, just passport. Okay, so yeah, I'm good. Birth I got no certificate stone. Certificate is always handy. Birth certificate. If you don't have a passport, oh uh, yeah, I have, I have get one. Get into Canada with a birth certificate, but you may not be able to get back to the state. <laughs> All right, well, yeah, I'm, I'm good on that. I have a passport, so. Okay. All right, no excuses. <laughs> All right, have a good night. You too. Bye okay. for now. Bye.